and we are live so hello and welcome to another episode of loose cannon uh this week we are picking up cannon. uh god damn it that was unmuted for some reason uh this, this week we are picking up kind of where we left off last week uh our last episode uh we were talking about rock and in gathering everything there is to know about Rolk, there is quite a fucking lot. So we decided that it would be best broken up into two parts. The first part focusing on the Shattered Sun lore book, and the second part focusing on the armor sets, which basically take place... I mean, I'm not sure if I'd say immediately after the Shattered Sun lore book, but after the Shattered Sun lore book, for sure... Because it, it's it's Rolk as a disciple of the witness. Right. Um, so, we've got a lot to talk about this week. How was your week? It was good. Good. It was awesome. good. Just staying at it. Steady moves, you know, forward every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get you there. Uh, so... Allergies. Allergies are horrible. So then uh, this week we have another uh, lore card, right? Yeah, so we've we've briefly talked about this one before in the past, but I thought it was a little bit relevant to bring it up now uh, in lieu of recent events in game and reality. But um, so I brought up Last Man, Last Man Standing, uh, which is a shotgun tied to the Drifter and Gambit. And, a, and it's a poem... Um, that I wanted to reference because in the flavor text on the gun, it says simply "Call me Ozymandias," and mm-hmm. a lot of people, you know, are like what well, is an Ozymandias, right? Well, Ozymandias is a poem by Percy Blythe Shelley. Um, Ozymandias refers to an alternate name of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh, uh, Ramses the Second. The poem portrays art's power of preserving the past while also exclaiming all power is temporary, no matter how prideful or tyrannical a ruler may be. And so this is nice because we just talked about Rolk, and we just talked about, you know, we're talking about the darkness and the witness and anybody in a position of power thinking that they can just rule everything, right? Mm -hmm. And by, by raising everything, you are now the conqueror of the land. And so this poem is great because it really shows how a tyrannical leader or somebody in power can come in and just dominate everything, destroy everything around them to take claim of it. But really when that happens, what are you left with? You know, you have this barren wasteland. The final shape, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, you have this barren wasteland of, of nothingness and what did you really accomplish in all of that? So this poem is great because there's a lot of meaning in it. Um, Within the poem, there's three voices. There's the original I, the traveler, and the voice of Ozymandias himself. The final image of the distant endless sands um, powerfully contrasts with the now hollow words of Ozymandias. So when you think about the poem before it's read, that's basically the three voices and what the meaning is behind it. And so the poem is is like this. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read. Which yet survive? Stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them, and the heart that fed, and the pedestal of these words up here. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look upon my works, ye mighty and despair. Nothing beside remains, round decay of all that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. And so... <coughs> What that means is Ozymandias is looking upon the conquered lands and everything that he worked to destroy and to claim as it, as his own. And so all he sees in the end 
is basically a broken statue of himself, the prideful ruler who came in to stake claim to the once beautiful land. And so there's nothing left but him speaking to himself and what he has become. And so I thought it was nice. Mm -hmm. was a good, I thought it was a good relevant uh, lore card to bring up. Yeah, no, that is that is definitely uh, I'd say relevant to the theme of um, the the witness <clears throat> and in in proxy, therefore Rolk. Yeah, yeah, and I thought Rolk, Rolk was a good representative of that, and you know, I'm sure we could find all kinds of good examples of that. Um, it, it harkens back to, like I said before, uh, Ramses the second, the mm-hmm. ancient Egyptian pharaoh. Um, and so that's that's a little tie in too, because if you think about this as a like a precursor to the current events, when we got the shotgun, all we could think of was, oh, well, this is you know Drifter, you know, this is talking about Drifter mm-hmm. wanting to be wanting to be the last thing, the last man standing. Yeah. Well, yeah, in a way, but when you read the when you read the flavors text, call me Ozymandias, um, that that has nothing to do with the Drifter, because when you think about it. The drifter doesn't want those same. He's not staking any claims. He's not wanting to, you know, raise everything and become the final ruler of everything. Yeah, that we know of, you know. And so, well, I mean, that definitely never seemed seemed to be his um his mo. MO. Uh, he's yeah. always been much more. Um, I understand that shit is going down, and exactly. I just want to outlast it. Exactly. And it's survival. He wants to survive. So he makes his little pocket uh, realm so that he can wait it out. Wait yeah. the deluge that's incoming. Um, you know, that's actually so, a really interesting um, observation, though, because I never I never I never knew the Oz- Ozymandias uh, reference. But that is a really interesting one because it's basically saying he's the last man standing. But someone else is saying, call me Oz- Ozymandias. Exactly. So it's like he he hit it out. He 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 survived to hear the <laughs> the person of who was Ozymandias. Yeah. So call me Ozymandias. And it's just it's just a funny little dig. Um, and 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 I thought it was neat because of how things are now in the game and how much of how much of the in I say like pyramid Egyptian inspirational stuff that we're witnessing now, like physical objects in game are very reminiscent of pyramids and pharaohs and all of this mm-hmm. stuff. And so it's a nice little neat little tie in. And when you think about Ozymandias, Ozymandias was um, the name for Ramses because after translations happened and mm-hmm. other things in history, uh, they just started calling Ramses Ozymandias in other countries and stuff. So that's mm. basically how that happened. So you ask yourself, why, why would they say Ramses and Ozymandias? It's because they had some, you know, technical issues and translation issues and stuff like that in the past. But it, it's very much tied to Ramses, the, the, the Pharaoh that used to rule uh, Egypt. And he was much like a conqueror, kind of a tyrannical leader, if you will, or what they, thought of him as Mm -hmm. cool so uh this week as as i I said before this week we're basically covering the raid armor and bungie likes to do uh stories across sets of armors they've done this for a while now i think the the first time it's actually been done was all the way back in rise of iron on their raid armor the uh wrath of the machine armor where it was the Siva memories, but they were just like snippets. Yeah. yeah. Because it wasn't, there weren't lore entries. So you only had like 20 words. Siva memory <laughs> fragments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you had to piece them all together. Yeah. And I remember I saw those and I, I was like, oh my God, what does this mean? I need to piece all these together and find like how, how they connect from like A to B to C to D. And yeah. I, I wrote them. I physically wrote them down on uh, index cards and I had red yarn and I just dedicated a section of my wall and it was like the, the fucking Pepe Sylvia meme. And I I was like, okay, so I just kind of put them all wherever I was 
just out so I could see them. And then I started like connecting the yarn and then I quickly realized they just go in in order and it's, it's not randomized at all. They go (laughs) helmet, arms, chest, legs, class item, helmet, and then other class helmet, arms, legs, chest, or chest, legs, class item, and then repeat. And so that has been Bungie's, um, <clears throat> standard ever since basically so whenever yeah. you see this type of thing if you're wondering how to read it pick a class read the class and so the the order between classes might might differ uh in this case it goes hunter titan warlock chronologically and in some cases they might be completely different stories and there's no real chronological between class so, for anyone looking to read them in their entirety, they're all Resonant Fury. Uh, so then the Hunter is called, like, Mask, Grips, Vest, Strides, Cloak. Titan is Helm, Gauntlets, Plate, Greaves, Mark, and Warlocks are Cowl, Gloves, Robes, Boots, and Bond. And I'm pretty sure those words as well, like... Hunters always have vest. Titans always yeah, have plate. Always like, yeah, it's always that way. So hunters know their their items as you know. Yeah. I always like confuse hunter and warlock with the with the cowl and the boots, and then I see strides, and I'm like, okay, well strides. that's not warlock. It's always strides. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it's stri- and it's funny because when you look at the little thumbnail pictures, sometimes it's hard to tell. Yeah. Are those hunter boots or are those warlock boots? You got to yeah. see if it's got a mini skirt. <laughs> if there's a miniskirt, it's a warlock. There you go. Uh, okay. So th- these are these are really interesting um, entries because basically, a uh, quick recap from Shattered Suns: Rolk was was kind of predisposed to violence from a very early age. He lived he lived in a um, society that uh, on a planet that had imperfect sync with two suns one sapphire and one umbral so that one half of the planet was in the light of one of the suns and basically his people were always kept in the umbral sun and the 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 other people were always kept in the sapphire sun and he destroyed the planet and in doing that the witness made him a disciple and it seems like the witness kind of guided him on that path without making yeah. itself known which is the very first thing as a very disciple or palpatine is it i'm not a big star wars guy it's very like uh yes yes <laughs> emperor palpatine mean okay. kind of like that I, that i can guiding, understand guiding darth vader to the darkness mm-hmm. the dark side or whatever but so then as as a disciple the witness basically tasked rolk with doing almost the exact same thing it, you know it's like go to this planet and the, this planet inhabited by a race known as the uh the oslid and he he calls them uh they are liquid fear sealed within porcelain flesh and they speak in a uh a clicking dialect and so basically He's not supposed to go there with an army. He's not going there with a fleet. He's not going there to assume control. He's going there by himself. Kill a few. Do what you have to do. Make them feel hunted. And try to find the ones that stand out. You know? Find find the you in their groups. Yeah. And so... It's not exactly the easiest thing to do when you have these, like cowardly uh species go in there kill a few while they're while they're not looking you know <laughs> are you are you, i just want to make sure are you are you here yeah okay yeah. there was just a, a silence there and i was like oh shit. <laughs> no, um yeah i was listening. And so Oh, yeah, sorry. kill a few. It, 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 I was just gonna make a funny, but then I thought it was kind of dumb, and then I started thinking about it. <laughs> That's fine. It was a, uh, it was a. Uh, what was the old? Okay, so when you said like he's gonna go and kill a bunch of uh, people that like find the you amongst the 
the the timid creatures kill a few to make an example basically it mm-hmm. reminded me of uh, that sci-fi movie golly what was it called it was like a parody of star trek and um oh there, a parody of yeah. star trek sort of yeah it, uh, it was called something anyway this is why i didn't bring it up but it was <laughs> it worked Oh God! What's the guy's name from Monk? He was in there, the main I, character from Monk. I I don't know his name. I never. Anyway, really, he would, really watched that. He show. was like he was like the leader of the that timid creatures race, and they were like squid people, but they could morph themselves into look like humans and whatever. And they <laughs> they were very easy to kill people, basically. Um, anyway, mm-hmm. I'll remember it later. <laughs> And so, you know, the Rolk is, these are basically like Rolk's journals of, of his, um, his mission given to him by the witness. And he, but I cast the gate myself. Nothing is immaterial that is in your sight. My prayers offend my witness. And so here and now I tear them out. I shall learn to forge by night in whispers and silence shall be your choir. So very indirect. He's not. The worms were kind of direct about it, right? Yeah. Like the worms find yeah, the high. Very much like this is what we do. This is what you do. And mm-hmm. in order to gain power over the universe, you must use this specific characteristic or something or other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was like, like, if you, if you want this power, you need yeah. to feed us and to feed us, you need to do these things, but also it's kind of just kill people and you'll still keep fucking. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, consume. I guess is the is the best way to like wrap it all up. It's like everybody is just fighting to consume the universe until they get to the final mm-hmm. shape or something or other. Um, and but so he's there. He's he's very indirect, trying to uh to bring them to the dark side. And uh, there's a lot of talk about his ego. He's like, is it the death of my ego you crave as you dispatch me alone against these insects? And it's like, that's kind of a little confusing to me. I want to know if you had any thoughts on that. Is it like because he he destroyed his civilization and he kind of feels like ushering in new disciples? It's like beneath him? Yes. Yeah, okay. I very much think that. Because, I mean, um, given his history and, and his, like... Uh, he's not really a megalomaniac. Um, he's more or less like I think he, he is. Though. Feels, he's like right there. Well, like he's on the precipice of that, but he okay. is like the he is like the perfect example of I am I am the everything, and I am or he is the he, he's like he's kind of like what everybody ends up being on the opposite side of Guardians. He is the guy that thinks he's going to be the one that heralds in the the new age dawn. Mm-hmm. death whatever the the end point the whatever he's i'm the representative i am the chosen one for you know this particular right you know like yeah. he thinks he thinks so highly of himself that um no one else could mount the mantle of this responsibility but him you know thinking about it like talking to you thinking about it it does actually make me realize callus was in a similar uh, uh-huh. situation you know he finds the edge he finds the edge the black fleet and all that and it's like oh he's gonna be he's gonna be a uh what did he call himself a uh a harbinger of the black fleet yeah i think so or something like a herald of the darkness or yeah no it was a herald that was it i knew it was an h he was a herald of the black fleet or the black edge which yeah. is basically his own way of saying I'm a disciple of a witness of the witness. And then he's just like sitting back waiting for the witness to tell him to do something. And the witness isn't doing shit and he's, he's losing yeah. his mind about it. Well, and cause it feels like Rolk is like the witness is kind of like, mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not as great as you think you are. I don't yeah. know. Maybe the witness is, I thought of the movie. What's the movie? Uh, galaxy quest. Okay, I've never heard, I've never seen oh, that. No, it's a really good movie. So these people are on a TV show, and they're basically it's basically Star Trek, and it was on daytime TV. And so these aliens think humans are the show because they saw the show in space somehow. And so when their civilization of squiddy people get attacked by this relentless, you know, Rolk-like character, yeah, 
this rogue like character comes to mm-hmm. kill them all. They reach out into the universe to see if anybody will save them. And so the TV show of Galaxy Quest, they think humans are like that. And so they call us to come save them. So they teleport the main characters from the TV show, but they're just humans. They're just dumb, you know, actors. characters on TV. Actors, yeah. Ima- so imagine William up, Shatner coming to save your civilization. There it is. So it's exactly that. And they go to space and these squid people are like, you are our, you know, whatever. Uh, you're our saviors. I guess it wasn't the guy from Monk. Anyway, I'm sorry. I've totally derailed the show. But <laughs> so they just they the the people that they're there to save just basically lay down and take it. Like anytime somebody kills them, they're just like, oh, I guess that was meant to happen. You know, it's that kind of attitude. Like, oops, oh, you know, man. that's yeah. rough. They killed my wife. You know, it's like okay, this is horrible. Fight for yourself, but they can't. So. <laughs> They call Galaxy Quest. Oh my God! Why did I even bring that up? Well, you know this this is similar because so my violence inspires fear. Each new corpse come daylight substrates accusations. They need logic, a cause and effect that fits within their understanding of the universe. Even when massacre comes from the black depths between stars, they must lay its accounting to the Tarsus of their most powerless. They divide, they appoint authorities, they see lines in the parts of us that exist only in their minds, and they value these so, so dearly, they will kill to define them. So it's like, yeah. they're, they're not really doing anything about it. Yeah. You know, that's a circles. really good, um, that's a really good statement on uh, societal art hierarchies and uh, like militaristic forces and countries and and I mean, you could even apply it to any branch of government. The mm-hmm. the way that Rolk shows his disdain for a species that builds himself up on basic constructs of the mind and everyone is just supposed to fall in line in some sort of rank and file and be appointed as like you're you're the representative for your feeble race that I'm just gonna basically swipe my sword across and raise everything that you own. But I want to fi- I need to find the the me and your people uh and so far nothing right Mm -hmm. but anyway it's funny because it's like a little dig at like just what we do as humanity and he he goes on to like realize what it is that the witness is tasking him with you have bidden me sharpen their fatuitous minds into a spear point as you did on lubre but without showing my face to cow them. So instead, I shall press my shape into the dust of this world and cast a generation of Oslid in my image. So yeah. that, that leads directly to the next entry, where Rolk... It, he says, cast a generation of Oslid in his image, and there's a part of me that's like... it. He, the way he talks about it, it really sounds like he's fathered Oslid hybrids. But I yeah. don't think that's the case. I think he's just like designated a brood, as they're called. Right. Yeah. That one. Uh, there might be more to that, huh? Like if we analyze that, I don't know. It's it's just the way he talks about them. There's like sometimes he talks about them. Um, let me try to find the exact line. The youngest of my brood, I named him Un has taken his first life and it's like okay but is it like are you actually its father or is it just a brood that like maybe you stole away and you like separated from the rest of society like what do you sounds, mean it almost sounds like he's like responsible for their conversion into the also like figure that he feels like maybe he didn't you know birth them but he was integral in their creation somehow yeah, it's it's a little it's a little confusing. I think it's just he's like an because he's not supposed to reveal himself, you know. Yeah. So I think he's like an outside force, just like paying close attention to them. But uh, he's the way that he phrases it is like kind of confusing and odd. But yeah. so basically, he 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 he's gathered this group of children and he's trying to curate them into warriors. And when Un takes his first life. 
stoked on emotion, his craft is sloppy, the hand of a child. But I have yeah. removed the removed the shoddy traces of his outburst and vanished those who might find fault with such a child. He shrinks from the anonymous endowments I lay as laurels for his conquest. I have permitted too much softness for the offspring. So basically, if you remember back in Shattered Sun, when he started killing the people who were killing his family, they were all yeah. like, whoa, man, you're crazy. We don't like you anymore. <laughs> yeah. And so now he's kind of like, you know, it's funny because there's a there's a little bit of parallelism um, between the way the way Callus would go around um, trying to raise up his own. What were they called? His people? His the shadows? Guy. You mean? Yeah, the shadows. Is that what they were? Oh, that was his like. He would he would go to a planet. He would find the strongest among them, like basically what yeah. happened to Rolk. Yeah. Find the yeah. strongest among them, and then say, "You're my shadow." you'll cast a shadow, whatever. And then he takes maybe 1% of the planet onto the Leviathan and kills everyone else. Okay. What wouldn't it be funny? Here's a, just a, a sidebar. Wouldn't it be funny if Callus knew about Rolk and knew his entire story and then claimed it as his own. And he was just lying the whole time. About creating shadows. Yeah, like his like everything he ever said to us was just bull crap. Well, I mean, we know he created. Sh- I guess we don't know he created shadows, but we have reason to believe he created shadows because they struck at Gaul and died. Yeah, but I, I mean, it really does sound like he learned about Rolk and was like, "Yeah, me too. I like that. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna do that as well." Poser. He's definitely a poser, Rolk. I mean. Yeah. No, like, w- without a doubt, he is. Yeah, I mean, I always said, you know, he's a panthomath. He tried to run around staking claim to things that weren't his own, and mm-hmm. he mouthed it off. I mean, just the stories of his his own scions that would make, make up fantasy, <laughs> fanfic for him, just basically lie about all the conquests he had had, I mean, kind of tells you about his character. Mm-hmm. But anyway, just thought and, it was neat. And so... Rook says, uh, and I am left to ponder, did you so attentively hone me into your blade, my witness, or did, did happenstance and my own tenacity ready a blade for you to draw? And, you know, the the Oslid race is very similar to the Lubrayan race, where, you know, or maybe it's, they're very similar, but there's a big difference. In one there's the potential that the witness had much more involvement than we know this yeah. whole half half live in darkness half live under the sapphire sun like if that was like a machination of the witness kind of pitting the two forces against each other that's yeah, how the witness uh, built it yeah you know that could be a thing like i'm going to create this environment to where i can grow a representative yep out of it and you are it like he was the like just like you said he was the uh, the creation of his his doing. Yeah, attentively yeah. hone me into your blade. And it's like, uh, he did. The witness did that, but they uh, did it over, like, generations. Right, of, right, of, right. Like, change. And it's it's so funny to think that way, because, you know, like, what we know of Destiny and what we play is so small. It's such a small fragment of time compared to what the, st- like, just this lore, you know, like, mm-hmm. everything is like, oh, this was hundreds of thousands of years ago. This was a million years ago. It's like, wow, you know, Mm -hmm. just to think. So it's really hard to think in time in this uh, lore because it's like, I mean, and then on top of that, nothing is technically linear. Yeah. So, And and so really quick, I I do want to say this because I feel like if, if you hear this, you can, you can listen for it throughout the rest of this rather than getting to the end and coming to the conclusion or I would say it at the end and then you'd be like oh let me go back like I'll save you the going back sure. pay attention to the things like this like the idea that the witness had had much longer involvement of of brewing turmoil to find the the perfect disciple like he didn't just go somewhere and go and you he yeah. was there for a long time. Right. right so right. keep that one in mind. Uh, and then moving on, 
with the uh, into the strides. Uh, Rolk's original foster brood have now had children of their own, and these children have taught the lessons their parent have been taught the lessons their parents were taught by Rolk. Slowly, a part of the Ashlid race is sharpening to the path of darkness. The original favorite of Rolk, Un, uh, is, disappoints Rolk. Uh, because they're frightened by their own potential for glory. So Rolk basically stops rewarding them. Like, it kind of sounds like they're still fighting back. They're still killing and everything. But they they, they, wish, they restrain themselves as well. They're not pursuing yeah. it. Yeah. Huh. Do you have uh, something to say? No, that's an interesting uh, perspective. I didn't think about it that way. Okay. But yeah. That kind of makes that makes some sense. So like they're holding back. Yeah. So okay. so Rolk is creating a more violent race of Oslid, but like I said, if if the witness did that to Lubre, they made that race not just based on violence, right? So like Lubre had um yeah. the regime who lived in yeah. the Sapphire Sun. And the regime employed stalkers to go find the others, like the, the right. people who it was out of that. So, like, he needed the one to balance the other so that he could breed the the one, you know. Because out of yeah. you can't you can't just like have all horror and annihilation all the time, exactly. Because because if that's all you know, then there's no drive, right? There's no counter. There's no there's nothing pulling you forward. It's just like okay, this is all it is. Well, this is not. You know, so you have to have that war. You have to have that battle. You have to have that fight for evolution in order to evolve. It's just like creatures on Earth. You threaten them with the extinction, and all of a sudden they start growing wings and fly into the sky. You know, it's mm-hmm. like anything. And that is exactly why uh, Rolk fails. The Oslid race dies in an atomic fire, and the only survivor is actually Un who then stands before Rolk, uh, wanting to know, like, who who you are, why you did this. Un started to see the pattern in Rolk's killings. So Rolk was sloppy. You know, Rolk was too yeah. involved, didn't step too back new. enough. You know, he's a noob trying to figure this stuff out. Yeah. And uh, despite failing, Rolk was really proud of Un for surviving, because it's like, right. he did fail, but he almost had it. You know, he, he, ha- he created this tenacious yeah. Un, um, and Un basically kills himself trying to kill Rolk. Yeah. And yeah. it ends by, uh, Rolk saying, and only now do I appreciate your lesson. So we don't really know what the lesson was exactly. Well, but... I think it was, I think it was his own lesson. Like he, he learned that, you know, um, he was it, a good example would be he's the brand new manager that comes in mm-hmm. and hires the staff and then like he trains all these people but you know he doesn't train them very well and then like you know everybody gets fired or leaves and he's left with the one guy and that one guy is like kind of resentful for him but at the end of it all the manager learned the lesson like wow mm-hmm. i kind of sucked at this but time to move on yeah uh, so that would that that ends the the hunter armor, and then we move into the titan armor. Yeah, and so you know, all the way back in Taken King, we learned about the worm gods, and yeah. people have been theorizing about them for fucking ever. You know, they were like, "Oh, they're Ahamkara that turned to the dark." Oh no, worms and Ahamkara are different. You know, yeah. back and forth, back and forth. <sighs> never really having a solid answer. Yeah. And this season, this expansion, we got a strike. You know the circle I'm talking about? Yep. And it's like, wait a second, what do you mean Ma- they're manufacturing worm larva? What the what does that yeah. mean? So if you played that strike before the raid really came out and even then the raid armor wasn't in the API until even after that. Yeah, so, so you had no solid ex- explanation. Yeah. yeah, so like you're watching the day one raid race, and there's someone with a titan, and they get one one piece of armor, and it's like, wait, what? What's this that actually talking about? It, yeah, I was watching the raid, and, and um, oh, I think it was, I think I was watching, 
Mylan. I think I saw Mylan. I just popped in there real quick to look to see, like, what are y'all doing? And he had just gotten a Titan piece of armor, and I read it's the a fucking Titan tech. now. He's always been a Titan. No, he's not always been a Titan. He's been a hunter. He plays. He plays both. But I thought he was a main, mainly a Titan originally. Huh. Well, we'll have to ask him. We'll have to give him shit. So <laughs> he got. He got a. He got a piece of armor, and um, I immediately looked at the flavor text, obviously, because it wasn't in the you know API yet mm-hmm. for me to look at. And so I read the flavor text, and I was like, "Wait, what?" Yeah. And so he just like kind of glanced over that. He was like, "I'm not going to read any of this, you know, right now. I'm I got work to do, right?" Yeah. But I was just sitting there like, "What does that mean?" So you're right. Yeah. People yeah. were getting drops and pieces of armor and screenshots, and I was trying to digest some of the new stuff, you know. He my Matt has um has more uh strength than I do. I Baxter still gives me shit for this, but I guess and I mean <laughs> I don't really remember the exact thing that happens, but I guess we were raiding and someone said something stupid on Twitter and in the middle of the raid they heard me like clacking at the keys and they're like, What are you doing? I'm like, I'm arguing with someone on Twitter and they're like, We're fucking raiding right now. And it's like, well, Someone said something stupid about lore. Like I had to correct them. That's funny. If I if I was raiding day one and I saw, for example, like the Resonant Fury helm, which says yeah. uh, Ur yearns for nurture, it does so through hunger, or the Gauntlets, Yule yearns for nurture, it does so through honesty, or the plate Zol yearned for nurture, it did so amongst the thousands. Yeah, the that graves, was the one I saw. I think. <laughs> yeah, the Greaves Akka yearned for nurture. It did so through secrets, or yeah. the Mark Air yearns for nurture. It does so through order. Yeah, you automatically I, are like, "Oh crap!" Yeah, it's I'd be learn. like, "Guys, I need to read this." Um, does anyone yeah. else have a different piece than me? Can you read it to me? <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to do. I was running around back and forth trying to read them all. I couldn't, mm. you know, they didn't open up the lore tabs. Yeah. Not even for a quick screenshot. That like that's the least you can do. I know. We need we need like lore representatives to go into the raid every mm-hmm. time there's a raid and when they get a piece of gear, it's just like, okay, everybody, screenshot this. <laughs> that's the thing, like with the end game, like the day one raiders yeah. and shit like that, they'll like get all the all the armor and the weapons and stuff, and you have to like pastor them to take like yeah. and it's like they're streaming anyway. Just like open it, go one, two, three. Okay, Bye. you're yeah, done with exactly. it. That's, That's all we all needed. Need. Not even that Thank long, really. See you later. Yeah. Um, but so, helmet, arms, chest, legs, class item. We learn that there is actually a sixth worm god, and yeah. her name was Zeta, the nurturing worm, because she was the mother of the worm. other five worm gods. Yeah. Uh, so Rolks, which introduces us a whole nother dynamic, which, yeah. Yeah. So to kind of summarize this, um, Rolk swam deep within the fundament, killed a Leviathan, ripped out its rib and used it to pry open the prison. The worm gods were kept in Rolk offered them a trade, their power for their lives. Zeta agreed, but informed him they needed sustenance for their power. Uh, Rolk refers to the krill species that live above them, and Zeta goes with Rolk to the pyramid ship that w- the raid would eventually take place in, which is one of the best skyboxes. If you're when yeah. you're in that raid, you can yeah. see Zeta. Yeah, that's that's really great. Um, so yeah, we 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 knew that the worms. When we learned in the Taken King about the worms. The 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 krill princes, uh, Sathona, Zyro, and Aura went down there into the opened prison, and the worms were like, "We'll give you power. You just need to ingest our larva," which is kind of fucking yeah. weird in the first place, right? Like that was yeah. a I that should have been a heads up. Been, yeah, and it, it's long been a question of mine. It's like, okay, so worm gods, worm larva. That means worm larva will eventually become worm gods, correct? Like, that's how... Well, they, you would think that's how they grow, right? Like, and yeah. then they get big. Like, it like it should have happened um, that Savathun or Oryx 
would have ascended to a point where, okay, now what? Now I just yeah. have to go back and kill my mother, father, worm, and then take over that mantle, and then so on, and then just keep going until, what, Zeta? Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it's just like, so if they're ingesting the larva, though, like in my head, if they're ingesting the larva, and they're feeding the larva, and the larva is giving them power, eventually the larva is going to be growing not just physically, like getting physically larger, but it's no longer going to be a larva. And it's like, yeah. why is it not bursting out of them at some point? And it always right. bothered me. And we're about to learn uh, why that is. But so when you're reading these, uh, these have perspective shifts. So some of them are of Rolk. Or some of them are from the perspective of Zeta. Actually, are they all? Wait a second. Well, I think it was kind of like through the eyes. I thought it was through the eyes of Rolk in the worm, but I, I could be wrong. I thought when yeah. they, like, because... when Ur when was speaking, it would, and then like the little sidebar, you know, like when you hear, you can almost see like Rolk talking. Yeah. And then that's what I thought. Well, the reason I mention this is because the uh, the timeline of events kind of goes back and forth yeah. a little bit. Um, where, like, in the first entry, Rolk is there confronting them, and he's got the rib, and he's like, look, I, I, I tore out the rib of, of a Leviathan, the thing that's keeping you here. I'm clearly stronger than the Leviathan to kind of wager uh, leverage. And then the second entry it kind of retells how Rolk did that. Like Rolk literally cut open a living Leviathan pulled from its chest, a rib many times larger than the subjugator himself. Yet he wielded it as nothing. And Zeta is watching this happen. Yeah. And the Leviathan winded broken cast its gaze down on the deep below. Uh, you would not look upon the ones who bested you beast, lift your eyes and meet mine. The subjugator placed the rib beneath the beast's skull and raised it level. What lies beyond belongs not to you, nor the false god hiding amongst the many moons. It belongs to that which witnesses all. You would do best not to forget it, regardless of your misplaced loyalties. And um, then the rib dropped into our dwelling, our deep, with force. It landed before us, uplifting the sediment and the fundament floor into a dense cloud from which he emerged. So it's like... The perspective is kind of weird that that Zeta wasn't physically there with Roll, but they were they were watching it happen. Yeah, and then they were still in their prison, and they saw the rib fall, and then Roll appeared out of the the dense cloud of dust that was kicked up. Yeah, that's odd. But for the sake of it, I mean, it's it, it's it's just like a really badass um, event, really. Yeah, the fact that you can... And then that rib was in the raid. Yeah, that rib is in the raid. Um, someone asked in chat, did Rolk kill the Leviathan or just rip out a rib? Or are there multiple Leviathans? Because Rolk went to meet the worms surely before Arash, Zyro, and Sathona dove there and met the Leviathan. So yeah, um, uh, Rolk was there before the princes were there. Like 100% they were. That's That's like confirmed. And sure. a little bit later, the reason I said he killed the the Leviathan, winded, broken, cast its gaze on the deep below. Would you not look upon the one that best? I guess it doesn't actually say he killed it. Because the the Leviathan, I only I only ever thought of it as being one, the Leviathan, and then the worm gods are down there. So the the Leviathan was always what they went to seek out, but it was the worm gods that they found. I always thought there was more than one. Leviathan? Mm-hmm. Like there were Leviathans? Yeah. Oh. The rib he tore from the cruel from the cruel Leviathan. Huh, maybe there is one. Maybe he didn't kill it. Yeah. And I thought that was kind of like where the whole Zeta came from, but I didn't, I, I, I didn't really puzzle it together. I didn't bother to read that. 
Snark holding out the rib. Yeah, no, you're 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 right. So it sounds like he just ripped out a rib and would like put the Leviathan in its place. And yeah. then went and grabbed Zeta and swam up with her. Um to the now he has ship. Zeta. Yeah, because now he has Zeta to make the other worms. And then it's kind of like laying a trap. Mm-hmm. Because he knew that out of Zeta, he was going to make the other worm gods. And then therefore, anybody else looking for the Leviathan, which if you're looking for the Leviathan, you have to be like Rook. Like you have to be a bad mother effer to be able to go down into the deep and get to the Leviathan. So it's like, here, let me lay this trap. Here's where the Leviathan is. If you, you know, call me when somebody shows up, right? And Mm -hmm. then all of a sudden the worm gods are there and they're like, yeah, this, you're coming down here. You got to make a bargain, bro. And then, you know, you make a bargain and then you end up, okay, well, here's how you're going to get to, you know, yeah. the, to live forever. And so then the, the next entry, the, the plate, uh, to summarize it, the traveler orbits the fundament, as we knew from the books of sorrow, uh, a 53rd moon, the Osmium King is surrounded by whispers and is going mad. The whispers coming from his worm familiar, which was a worm yeah. larva. Uh, the traveler plans to raise up the krill from their weaknesses, so the witness must act first, which we learned in the Witch Queen campaign. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the worm familiar is given to the most clever among the princes for telling a prophecy of catastrophe. One might not be a lot. One witch might not be a lie to all to get the princes to abandon their home before the traveler arrives, which yeah. again we knew from the books of sorrow. So it's this this kind of has like a lot of overlap with stuff that we've already learned, but it just gives you a perspective shift, which, you know, there was that controversy a while ago about the lore being all folklore and it's like not everything is, yeah. is expressly true. And it's like, yeah, it's not because it's all about the perspective. And many of us understood that the way that it was phrased was probably a little more confusing. They could have phrased yeah, it better. That, I forget that who upset said it. a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. That upset a lot of people. They're like the Lord's not even real. Like that's that that's not what they said, but that's kind of how it came yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Well, and people like, who like people who are into the lore knew what they meant, but the people yeah. that weren't just were automatically like, "Oh, this is a retcon. There's no way yeah. you're just trying to back yourself out of a painted corner." Blah blah blah. No, they've always had trapdoors and ways out of each encounter or each story. So there's there's always a way. To wrap this up, but it's like you said, this whole entire story is told through perspectives, yep. and it takes many perspectives to puzzle together exactly what actually happened because everybody has a different opinion. Like Kate even knew, saw things differently than you know Zavala did, and you know Eris uh, saw things differently from her fire team. So like mm-hmm. everybody has you know a different perspective. I mean, the Drifter obviously has a completely different perspective than Saint Fourteen, and so. Just like this, Savathun had an ulterior motive. Rook had an ulterior motive. So, of course, they're going to tell two different stories. So, something just occurred to me that I'm going to touch on when we... Because we're almost done with the Titan set. Or is it the Warlock set? It is the Warlock set. Okay. Um, I hope I remember. Uh, Let me put a... Let me just put this down at the bottom here. Because I don't want to forget it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll just continue on. Because I don't want to spoil it before we get to it. Right, right, right. I, I don't want to forget it. Um, so Rolk <laughs> sorry. Rolk took Zeta up to the pyramid ship. Rolk cut living pieces off of Zeta and sent them adrift back on the fundament, knowing one of them would find its way to the Osmium Court's shores. That was the worm familiar that the Osmium King found, dro- the, yeah. was driven mad by, and then was also found by Sathona, specifically also, in the... Also, real quick, real quick. Also, you say that worm familiar drove him mad? Mm-hmm. The worm that we used to make the grenade launcher, he yep. was driving me mad because same I had worm. To keep because I had to keep hearing him talk in my ear the whole dang time I'm trying to get that stupid exotic quest done. 
I mean, kudos to to Bungie for writing that in there. But that Bungie or that worm character is like grating sometimes. I loved the worm, and I'm not sure if I said it on the on the show or not. But I was really upset at the end of the 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 mission where it was like, and now I'll never speak again. And I'm like, but I want you to. (laughs) I was kind of glad for that resolution, though. Yeah, I mean, I could tell that you would be from what you're saying here. But that is one and the same. That is yeah. the worm familiar that was cut from Zeta, that was sent yep. to the Osmium Shore, that drove the Osmium King mad, that was given yep. to Sathona to urge them into the deep, was kept by Sathona and fossilized. We defossilized it and then put it in the in the in the gun. And don't forget, Mara Mara intended to take that worm and put it in herself. Basically, the whole she time. did not intend. That you was don't a, think that so? was a lie. She, she sort of did act like it. Yeah, that was the lie to get the worm to do what she wanted. True. Um, and so the hive have been, I guess, subjugated. The worms have been subjugated. I'm not sure if the hive could be considered subjugated, but the hive have been created. The krill accepted the worm pact. Uh, they've created their throne worlds, and the witness sees a lot of promise in Savathun specifically, which is funny. I'll touch on it at the end again, but it's funny because from what we thought, the witness was very buddy buddy with Oryx. Maybe not. Right, not so much. Um, and so Rolk was placed permanently within Savathun's throne world to be a a, a mentor and a guide to her. And Rolk was pretty jealous of what the witness saw for her, saw in yeah. her. And as this is um, in the perspective of Zeta, it finishes with her saying, In the deep, my children pay a price in servitude for survival. In ascendance, the hive pay a price in servitude for power. And in the dark, I pay a price in servitude so that others may be nurtured. It yeah. must not be in vain. So here comes uh, Savathun, and it's like it's almost like the witness hired another manager. <laughs> yeah, and so and so Rolk feels threatened because he's like, "Oh, I'm going to get replaced or what?" <clears throat> but uh, maybe that drives Rolk forward, right? That threat, that threat to his power. So uh, from chat, uh, they said that fossil worm wasn't the launcher worm. The launcher worm is what Mara got from Savathun. Launcher worm was what Mar got from Sabathun. No, because when we put it on the relic, it defossilized. And then we put it in the launcher. Yeah, that's how right. I, that's how I thought. I mean, if you got something, you know, show it to us, because yeah, I'd like to re- I'd like to or, read it. Oh shit, no, wait, maybe they're right. Was that the, the was that the exercised worm? Was that Sabathun's worm familiar? Not worm familiar. Worm Packed worm? It was, I think. Oh, okay. No, that's on me. It was was Savathun's actual worm? That was Savathun's actual worm. I don't know what happened to the worm familiar. When you're juggling this many worms, I'm going to get them confused. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks thanks for catching that. Uh, Yeah, I appreciate it. You're opening a can of worms. (laughs) Ha! And and so that brings us to um, the Warlock set in which directly follows um, the end of the Titan set because Rolk has been placed in Savathun's throne world. Uh, Rolk is sent to Savathun's throne world to keep an eye on her. So this is kind of a different take on it. Uh, keep an eye on her because she doesn't realize the throne world is a prison or that her people were tricked into accepting the worm larva. So yeah, like the witness told the witness told Sabathun and told Zeta or whatever, like, Oh, he's there to mentor her. And the witness is like, I don't fucking trust her. (laughs) She is valuable, but I don't trust her. But yeah. Yeah. And, um, and then, uh, the gloves Rolk doesn't trust Sabathun either. But he does trust the witness's wisdom. Uh, within the throne world, the worm larva breeding chambers have been constructed. This is the strike we mentioned. 
and yeah. will be used to massively increase the armies of Zevorath and Oryx and of course Savathun. Uh, so that original um, slice that was taken from from Zeta that created the original batch of hive that's not effective they had to make breeding chambers of worm larva and they basically mass produced them and we shut that down so that's actually probably one of the largest blows to the hive we've ever done yeah so this begs the question like so like i know i saw mylan bring this up but this is like the question everybody had right after that was okay so now we won't see any more new hive that is that exactly. is what I believe it means. Yes. Yeah. So like there, whatever there are hive a we finite need, number of hives. Only... Yeah. yeah. Because so before this, the hive could reproduce, but they're not reproducing the hive. They're reproducing krill. So then they would yeah. take the worm larva from the breeding chamber and give it to the hive. Even if we didn't destroy that breeding chamber, Sa- Savathun is no longer going to just be like, yeah, here you go. Have, have more fucking yeah. worm larva to kill me. You know, she would use it only for her own, her own broods. Um, but so now devastating blow on both sides. Sure. Interesting. Which, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of usurped because of the whole lucent brood, you know, they can just resurrect each other. And not little... if we kill their ghost. Well, yeah, you know, but like, so the ghost is all they have yeah. to keep that going. Same thing with guardians, though. That's true. There's only a but... finite number of ghosts. Because cause the, the hive can still create krill. The humans can still create humans, but there's no more hive being created. There's no more guardians being created, and there's no more lucent brood being created. We're, we're basically... I, mean, I see new guardians in the game all the time. <laughs> You know what I mean. How many players are playing Destiny now versus D1? <laughs> um, Where'd they all come from? There's many I, ghosts that haven't found their Chosens yet. That's all. It's They're coming from alternate timelines and realities. and Yeah. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> while Rolk has been tasked with hanging out in Sabathun's throne world... That's not all he was able to do. He was sent out to continue doing his thing. And in probably one of his more enjoyable moments, he wasn't just sent to try to convert a select few. He was just sent to decimate a civilization. Um, So from the Resonant Fury robes, Rolk is remembering a conquest of a planet uh, called Caloranda. I believe it is. Caloranda is how I'm pronouncing it. I I, I can read it. What? Do you agree? Calaron? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so just before he could deliver the final blow to the planet, a cult acted. Rolk believes that it was Savathun who formed this cult and made them believe that the destruction of the vaulted ring was a sign of the end. They also believed that the darkness of oblivion to be a blessed thing and ended all the life on their own planet just before Rolk could. And so Rolk believes that it was Savathun because he's basically like, he's like really mad about this. Um, uh, And he says, and there was nothing calling to the witch's involvement, save the twist in her face that betrayed restrained delight. So. (laughs) Yeah. And that would have fed her worm as well. Being a uh, trickery, stealing all those kills from Rolk, even if not directly. Yeah, that, that is definitely a huge blow. Yeah. Again, a blow to his ego. How sad. <laughs> uh, so then moving on to the boots. Uh, Rolk mocks Savathun in light of the death of her brother Oryx. So this is like, this is one of the only times that we actually have a like a chartable point in time. Everything before this, we have no fucking idea how long ago this happened. This could have been <laughs> millennia. It could have been yesterday, or it could have been the day before Oryx died. 
Um, so Rolk mocks Savathun in light of the death of her brother Oryx. He accuses her of playing a part in his death, and she mentions having gained an army from it, but not gaining the ability to take. Because if she had actually orchestrated Oryx's death, she absolutely would have made sure that she came out of it with the ability to take. Take, yeah. Uh, Rolk then mentions how Savathun always worked within the bro- the shadows of her brother. Without him, she's now exposed. And unlike the previous entry, uh, I have little fear from the sun, she insists. But there is no twist in her face. No secret delight. <laughs> so, he was absolutely right. The death of Oryx, and if you think about it from like a game stance... Like the second Oryx died, everyone's like, Stavathun's next. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> immediately yeah. set their focus on getting Savathun. Yeah. And uh, then we come to the final warlock piece, the Resonant Fury Bond. Savathun has gained the light, imprisoned Rolk in his pyramid, and claimed the throne world, which was her prison, as her home. She sends out a message to the witness, a challenge, that they will never set foot in it again. So specifically, she... uh, Let me actually find the line. Because... Now the ones from... It's fractured. So try and send your scorn or your disciples or even bring your many selves to reclaim your loss, if you must. But this is my domain now, and you shall never set foot inside it, even if I draw my final breath to keep it away. And, uh, I know she called it a prison. One more. And, and, and that's because, um, now that it's her throne world, uh, anything that steps into her throne world is bound by the logic of her environment and can be destroyed or something like that. Well, so, that so it was always her throne world. You know, that was never a lie. It was always her throne world, but secretly the throne worlds were a prison. They were like an added layer of deceit on the hive yeah. and the witness and Rolk were kind of like sitting back like, Oh yeah, we got them. They don't, they don't realize they just bought a timeshare, you know, like all fucking proud of themselves. Yeah. But, in this in this uh, last message to the witness, she she says it was a, it it was this said pleasure that I think that's a typo that gave me the strength to disperse the light throughout this prison you called my home. Since it is now to remain my domain, it has been decorated to reflect as such. So she knew that the witness considered it a prison as well. She was aware, and so. Remember in the campaign, we get the worm familiar. We put it, uh, we don't even bring it to the, re- we don't need to bring it to the relic. We did that because it was fossilized, but yeah. she has the altar of reflection. So what if she had already done that? Huh. What if, what if she had brought the, the familiar to the altar of reflection? Saw, excuse me, saw that the witness had planned to trick the hive and she would all, she was like, Oh, I'm setting all this shit in motion now. Like you're not tricking me. Yeah. So she had a way, she had a way to see what he was up to. Mm hmm. And no one knew. And, and they thought they were tricking her this whole time. They thought they had her trapped, but she was orchestrating this plan of getting the light. And maybe that happened right after Oryx died. Maybe she knew it before Oryx died because, she definitely had her suspicions all, all the way back when Oryx took Coria and gave Coria to her. She was like, aren't you a little, like, curious? Like, don't you think things are a little suspicious? And he's like, no, absolutely fucking not. So that's something that just occurred to me while we were talking about it today. That's what I wrote down. I didn't want to forget that Savathun knew the entire time what the witness had done. Ugh. But I mean, no wonder she wouldn't be a god of tricker if she couldn't like suss that out, right? Right. That's that's impressive. Yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, she was able to gain the light, and specifically, and this is a great segue, not steal the light. So the Imperious Sun Shell, which I have terrible news for everyone who has not already gotten the Imperious Sun yeah. Shell. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm almost positive we brought it up last week. I'm pretty sure it was one of the, actually yeah because it's still here on my stream deck. Um, the method of obtaining the Imperious Sun shell, which used to be easy to do, you can just go into the Not raid. Anymore. Not anymore. You can just go into the raid solo. There's not a darkness zone until after it. You punch in the codes. You go a little further. You wipe. You punch in the codes again. You go a little further. You wipe. You get it done in in 20 minutes. Now, if you have not gotten it already, you have to do each entry, 10 entries, one one week at a time. 10 minus 5, assuming you got the five pillars. Yeah. 10 minus 6 assuming you got the 5 not, pillars and the yeah, first entry man, I wish they wouldn't have like locked it up just leave it you know what's really weird about it though they did it after it didn't matter anymore if 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 someone did it legit they got the 5 entries from fighting the right. 5 the 5 little altars that tell you things and then they, they also did the first input on week 1 then week yeah. 2, 3, 4, 5 and that's when they fixed it that's all 10 entries so it's like, why did you even need to fix it? They didn't, they should, they didn't need to. They should they didn't have just to. left it. it was like so many other things they could have fixed. It, it was. I dislike that when when there's something yeah. that that hurts and affects no one. It's not a weapon. It's not an exotic armor piece. It's a ghost shell. It's a lore book in a ghost shell, and you're like you're time getting you intended, it. Like I know you intended it for it to be this way and hard to get, but it, it you broke it. Leave it broken because there's people that already got it and they already, you know, were able to 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 exploit that exploit or whatever. And now you just locked it up for the people that are finally able to go in there and do it yeah. the same way. So there's there's you know no what? reason to to do it. There's no reason to exactly. Um, but so we have the the lore entry from the ghost shell, which is available on Ishtar. Go read it on Ishtar if you don't have it. Yep. Um. Basically, one of the newly inspired ghosts, because the the ghosts that are resing the hive aren't newly created. They were regular ghosts that decided they just want to start resurrecting hive. Um, they find their way into the fucking pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck they were doing? I have no idea. These ghosts don't sound very smart because our ghost immediately was like, oh, man, I don't like that. When when we first saw the pyramid in Shadow Keep, but they were just like, like the same kind of ghost that uh, pulled pork was made out of, huh? Yeah. But so, the ghost basically comes face to face with Rolk and has this conversation, um, and uh, so Rolk says, uh. The ghost says, ah, yes, there it is. I'm meant to share it with someone worthy. Basically saying, um, I'm meant to share the light with someone worthy. And Rolk responds, rejoice, I have worth beyond worth. And then the ghost doesn't... I don't think it's the ghost speaking. I think it's actually the traveler speaking through the ghost. And it's like in all caps. And it says, disciple of the dark. And Rolk says, adversary. And the ghost says, this one is not for you. And then something happens, and Rolk goes like, ah, too bright. And then yeah. uh, Ellipse, and then Rolk says, nothing but scrap. They refuse to let their secrets be taken, only given. And it ends with Rolk saying, poach another curious fruit from the witch's collection. They cannot, as a race, all deny our worth. Yeah. So, two big things. Um... Not only did Sabbath not steal the light, but you can't steal the light. The light refuses to be stolen. It is only ever given. given. Yeah. Gaul came as close as you can get to stealing the light, and the traveler said, nope, and fucking nope. killed him. Yeah. Which was hilarious. Yep. And the yeah. other thing is, Rolk is dead, but before he died, he told, I'm assuming the Taken or the Scorn, to go collect some more ghosts because mm. one of them's going to revive him. Sick. I mean, one of them can revive him. I don't think they would, but they can. You know, there's always like these little back there's always like these little back doors laid that, yeah. you know. So like just in just future, in case they want to do more rock stuff, yeah. they had this they had this written down. 5 years from now, we get a re we get a revamp of the vaulted 
you know, <laughs> bow the disciple rage. <laughs> and it's Rogue I'm, back with the light. <laughs> see, like, there there are rumors that um, the uh, Taken King, King's Fall, is the next one coming back. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, well, how, how is how is Oryx going to come back to life if we killed him? And it's like, oh, the two truths and the lie, Oryx is not truly dead. And it's like, yes, he is. He's not right. coming back. He, when when King's Fall comes back as a raid, it will be a Legends content. It is not taking place in this point in time. It took place in the point in time many years ago now, like five years ago now. I think more. Um, so he's not actually back. You're it, just playing a raid. You know what though? It, it would be cool though. Um, like if there was some sort of back channel way to go back to the raids and just explain that as oh. We've opened up a portal. You can go back and do the raid because we forgot something, or we need to help plant what you had already gotten from the raid. Because now's the time in the future when you need to go put that gem particle back there, basically, and say, "Here we go. This is well, for the future." Well, they actually do kind of have that, but it's it's not so in depth as that because Ikora has used to have more frequently the thing called meditation, which was yeah. the lore reason you could replay a mission a second time. You were like meditating that. on the yeah, mission. Was, yeah. So like you could go back and meditate on the Oryx raid and then yeah. figure out, well, okay. So when we got the revamped, uh, vault of glass, the items from the raid had changed dialogue or changed, uh, flavor text. Yes. But so I'm really interested to see if they do that with the Taken King. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will with certain things. But sure. just because the flavor text has changed, just because maybe the item looks a little different, just because it has a time lost version Doesn't or, or mean whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it is the exact same item that sure. it was all the way back sure. then. <laughs> yeah. People this this is one of those things that like really fucking like these are one of the things that I would stop rating to have an argument on Twitter about where they're like yeah. Then how do you explain it? It's like it's a video game. <laughs> Imagine playing the game. Imagine watching the day one race, and then who won it this time? Um, oh I man, I want to say the, the the clan name. All I can remember is Redeem, and I know Redeem didn't win. Dado came in second. Did he? Didn't he? I think he. I think he might have. Um, I want to get their name. I want to give them a shout out. See, this is what happens when you're a lore nut. You don't keep up with all the other nuts. So <laughs> Elysium. Okay. So yeah. imagine you're watching the raid race and Clan Elysium wins. And then it's like, man, I can't wait to go in that raid. You can't. Because Rolk died. And Rolk doesn't oh, yeah, no. come back. Like, could you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, 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 it's yeah. done once. He's dead. What are you what are you doing? <laughs> that wouldn't fun. be a very fun game. Yeah. Well, the black edge is just your TV screen anyway. <laughs> That's that is a very meta joke. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Um there is one more entry. And I don't know which one came first, the ghost entry or the the collective obligation entry. So I put the collective obligation entry last because it sounds it's a, it's a, it's the good place to stop in my opinion. Sure. Um, so the summary of it, Rolk reveals that humanity was never on the chopping block, not entirely. Humans were seemed similar to those who lived on Lubre and the Oslid. The witness meant to call the weak and entice the strong. Even with yep. the death of Rolk, this is still going on. Yep. And so. All the way back at the start, I said, pay attention to these things, these themes. The Witness isn't just going around killing everything. There are planets where he has, or they have, involvement. And they're trying to uh, foster turmoil and find a disciple among them. And it, yep. it really feels like that's where it's going with humanity. Yeah, because like you got to think... Why were we pitted against Rolk? If the witness is behind all that, why? Mm -hmm. You know, because he, it, it's very much like you've got to bring a challenger to fight the Guardians. If you're going to overtake the Guardian, you've got to have something. So 
It's not that he thought Rolk would succeed necessarily. It's that maybe by us defeating Rolk, that's all he needed to, you know, um, what's the word? Cement his ideas about the Guardian and what mm-hmm. his future plans are for the Guardian. Because now you've defeated Rolk and you are deemed somewhat worthy, right? Of his, I mean, we were always somewhat worthy of his attention, you know, but it's funny because his name's The Witness. He very much bears witness to your ascension into this being that is able to overtake these huge gods. Mm hmm. So, you, I mean, the game is about you as the Guardian. You are technically the chosen one. I mean, this is your story. So, all this crap that's happening around you is for you. I mean, it's a very solipsistic type of reality you live in. It's all for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, because even if you're not the raid, because now that like raids are like built into the story, even if you're not the raid, the raid one team. The way that they talk about it, it's like ambiguous, and it's like, yeah, you can be yeah. the raid, <laughs> yeah, the guy who did it. <laughs> it used to just like they used they used to just give you the title if you beat the raid, and they would they wouldn't really reference the raid at all in the story. It would just be like, uh, what what they call you, um, Crota Bane or whatever, High yeah, Bane, yeah, the Bane of Crota, yeah, yeah. High Bane, yeah. Um, they would say things like that, and it was like, yeah, thanks, I did do that raid. That was cool. Yeah. I guess it does actually <laughs> exist. But now it's like actually referenced in like quest text and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So one one last thing that I wanted to say is, with this expansion, with this raid and everything, going back to the beginning of Beyond Light, it really felt like the Witness was talking to us, the player, trying to get us, the player, to come to their side. And this expansion, it sounds like the witness is kind of sick of us. And yeah. me and my friends kind of had this like running gag that the witness is like, you know what? Fuck guardians. Fuck this fucking place. I, I hate, I hate all this shit, but going through this stuff has made me think <laughs> maybe he's not saying fuck guardians. Maybe he's saying fuck the player. Yeah, it could be because Obviously, Destiny is not a game that has multiple endings. It's going to have one ending for the Light and Dark Saga. And that ending cannot be that we side with the Witness. It's that you came here to play as a Guardian, the Guardian, the Traveler, etc., etc. So, we'll be tempted by the Witness. We'll take the Dark Powers, but we won't side with the Witness. Meanwhile, the Witness will find their Guardian Disciple that will be like... You know, in the final raid where you actually go and kill the witness, the first boss is a guardian or a few guardians or several guardians. Maybe those are the ads. Maybe you're just like fighting fucking guardians. Oof, that'd be scary. Yeah, right. And then the raid guardian is just one with a gallar horn. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you know, you you could be onto something though. Like he was originally uh, talking to us, the player, and then he got to the point where he's just like, "God dang it, I'm sick of this. Come on, yeah. here's where we're going now. You, you guys are annoying. I'm sick of the player, but not of the guardians. Yeah, I'm not done. You want to play? Let's really play. And he starts cracking his knuckles and mm-hmm. let's go. You mm-hmm. don't even know yet. That, that's this, that's that's kind of where I, I'm I'm thinking it's gonna go now. Yeah. Well, so do you think, okay, we're at the end anyway, Mm -hmm. so now we can play the part of, like, what do you think's next? So do you think, all right, so do you think... You mean, like, uh, after light and dark? All right, so we're getting these little riddles, the the two truths and a lie, two lies and truth, whatever. Um, And I think that they're kind of playing with that because they're just trying to, they're just trying to invoke what, like, what's going to come next. So we know what's going to come immediately next i mean we know it's inevitable we're gonna have like you know the the taken king raid or something and Mm -hmm. and then like some other things but do you think there is something to those questions that sabathun air quotes is asking because are we one of the lines in there was uh you will travel to other galaxies or other places i think that's inevitable okay do you think that what we do here 
will be wrapped up in a bow and then then something else is going to happen in like a a galaxy far far away a long time ago whatever and it's a, another whole thing uh yeah i so speaking about the after the light and dark saga after final shape we are at the beginning of this year you know we have yeah. this whole year and then two more whole years after that and yeah. at GDC they had a presentation and uh actually I can I can't pull it up. Uh they had a presentation where they showed like a redacted roadmap and it wasn't like anything you couldn't really draw anything from it because all it all it showed was um Beyond Light and then the seasons of Beyond Light and then Witch Queen and then the season of the Risen followed by small flags for the season after the season after the season after. And then uh, what's after that light fall season after season after season after season after, and then final shape. And then beneath the final shape, big flag, there was a second big flag. Who knows what that is? And oh. then beneath the big flag, there were five small flags and in the beyond light section, there was a flag for the 30th anniversary content. So it seems like final shape is kind of like based on absolutely fucking nothing. Right. We have no idea what it could mean. It could be a mistake to even be in there in the first place. They could have just miscounted because it's not like they're naming them or numbering. We did this when we did this when we saw comet. So yeah, exactly. And, it's it's not even like they numbered them. They weren't like season okay, well it's season 13, 14, 15, 6, and 17, 18. We yeah, just don't yeah. have the names yet. It was just question marks. So it'd be <laughs> super fucking easy to put one extra in there and just get confused. And they weren't even like in a linear order, because it was like, here's this timeline and we gotta fill it. So it's like, here's 14, here's 15, here's 16, here's 17, here's 18, here's 19, here's 20. Like it was just it was going all over the fucking sure. place. Yeah. They did. They made it confusing, so I can see it being a mistake. But it, it, I guess my hope would be that with the end of a light and dark saga, they they kind of go all out, right? Yeah. Give us give us a big extra thing at the end. Give us that thirtieth anniversary awesome. content for light and dark saga. Well, but that's years from now, anyway. <laughs> and. Uh, this is the end of our show. Unless you have something else to say? No, that was pretty much it. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to what's coming up next really soon. So we got solar arc revamp. I'm, I'm curious as to how that's going to tie back into the gameplay. I can't wait to become a gunslinger again. When I first started the game, the Thanks. first thing that I really identified with as a player was true gunslinger and mm-hmm. true gunslinger fashion. I like the fantasy of being a robot Western cowboy with a flaming gun going around destroying everything. I don't necessarily like the lore aspect of, you know, what is tied to a lot of the solar uh, people, but I do like the fantasy of being uh, a solar cowboy, you know, robot. Yeah. (laughs) I, I hope, uh, I think the arc one is next based on, Some of the things they said. And there's we don't know if the arc one is next. If anyone says that it's been confirmed that arc is next, that is not true. But in my mind, sorry. Yeah, no, no. Like you said, it's all speculation. Yeah. In my mind, uh, you don't work. They didn't work on all three light subclasses at the same time. They worked on Void. They're working on the next one. They work on the next one, and yeah. they decided in this season to take some of the void inspirations and put them into the synaptic spear, which has a throwing animation of a spear. Our hunters have a spear or a staff, hmm. but it could be a fucking spear. They throw like it. Arc energy when you use yeah. it. And yeah. also when you have the spear, you get quickness, which gives you that massive first jump. Uh, yeah. So like, these are all yeah, things that's like an arc thing. Yeah. yeah. And they actually specifically said that they, they applied arc, mentalities into the spear so if void was already finished and they're pumping arc attributes into the spear it sounds to me like arc is next and when you really were to look at it void is probably the most fun 
probably going to be the most fun, probably going to be the most useful. So that was probably why I got picked yeah. as the first it's one. It's funny because sp- as, as much as of, of, of like a gunslinger, I am the, the most played is void. Yeah. It's always void just because yeah. of the ability that you can get from it. So, and, but, and yeah. that's what makes sense. That's why it makes sense to give void the treatment first. And sure. then when your choice is between arc and solar, you look at the arc and solar kits and it's like, well, I guess warlocks have their, their Kamehameha and that's kind of useful and Titans, you know, they like to do their, their meme, their meme smashes with the, uh, the Kuros, uh, exotic yeah. and arc hunters are basically not used. Right. So it's like, whereas solar, they actually have a fair bit of play. Maybe not, they're not top tier, but they're, it's like D tier and C tier. So it's like, okay, well, yeah. we've got to bring up the D tier yeah. before we bring yeah. up the C tier. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so our next show will be on April 10th and I have no idea what we're going to talk about. We're going to, we're going to have to go through the lore books and see what is up because the yeah. seasonal lore book. Well, I think a psyops would probably be a good one just because I think in two weeks we'll probably have something else. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what I mean. The, the seasonal lore book for, from the psyops, uh, uh, yeah. I, quintessence i believe it's called it yeah. is finished in game it has not been pushed out into the api yet there you go so it's it's not impossible to talk about it's just a pain in the ass when i can't just copy and paste it and make notes on it um so hopefully next week it, it will be out and we can work on that aside from that there is the um the minimum lore book which is yep. bugged and we don't know how to finish the lore book, like in game, how to finish the lore book, but yeah. the counter is true. That's it's all in the one. API. So yeah. it's like, do we spoil a lore book or do we yeah. choose the annoying lore book? Maybe we'll do the, uh, uh, the fuck is it? Something of mercy, the salad in book. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good option. Yeah. Kind of whatever it is. Too. All right. So that's going to be it for us this week. We hope you had a good time. If you joined late, if you want to just listen to it again, it will be up very soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.